Natalie. Hi. Okay, Welcome. I'm literally in the hallway right now. <laughs> it's okay. We're not here to judge Natalie. We're just here to see how you're doing, ask some questions, have some fun. I know, but I want to look cute and look cute. You look adorable. Like you, you, you're, you're doing all right. Um, <laughs> For how you feeling? Like, you know, the, you just got some bad, bad news. How are you holding up? Yeah, you know, I'm really, um, watching the episode has really helped me actually this last year. I've been super hard on myself because I kind of knew, uh, let me not say immediately, but as the year has gone by, because it's been a year since we left the beach, I've come to the realization that I didn't win. But Rem watching this the, the last three episodes, especially starting with the battle back, has been really powerful for me to also put into perspective how amazing my journey is. I think that I'm super hard on myself. And for me, I'm the kind of person who's like, um, I'm like the kind of person that's first, second place is first loser. And so mm -hmm. I'm trying to move past that and appreciate my journey and my story. And I think watching it and seeing all my hard work and the emotions is helping me out a bit, but it definitely stings that uh, I just lost $2 million. <laughs> now, now, Rob in particular called out the fact that you didn't challenge Tony to the fire making challenge. It, it, yeah. Did you realize that was a mistake then or did it not occur to you till tonight? It occurred to me as soon as I saw Sarah and Tony making fire and I was like, get me off this travel car. <laughs> so and then they, and then they hold each other and cry and you're like, oh, oh no. I was cringy. I, me and Michelle <laughs> kept looking at, like this is me and Michelle. That's all I kept doing. I, and I was like, dude, get me all out of here because I feel like I'm in the twilight zone. And I was just like, why did I let this happen? Like, I knew it would be really powerful if they both went against each other. But you know what? I was an emotional and physical hot mess by the end. And I never second guessed myself. Like my first season, you see like how I play. I think my just mental and physical exhaustion towards the end made me second guess all my decisions. And, uh, it's something that I just, I will have to eventually get over. It, uh, it's not happening right now, but um, I, that's one of the things I, uh, that's still one thing I regret about my game is not going to file with Tony. Now, go, being the first person out is everybody's worst nightmare. Um, and, and you experienced it and you made the most of it. I, I thought it was really interesting that while you were there, your sister Nadia, who was also the first person out, she comes out with Trinity, her adorable daughter. What kind of conversation did you have when, when you were out there? Did, did she have any advice or any pick-me-ups that, that she imparted? Yeah, so like I was so embarrassed about my vote out and I told Nadia, I was like, Nadia, I got voted out first. And she's like, Natalie, I don't give a, like, I don't care. Like you, I got voted off. And then I remembered, you know, like I was in her position and I never understood that feeling. And then I understood it. Uh, this time I was just playing for myself instead of playing for her. Uh, but it was awesome because she'd been in my shoes. She knew how it felt to be blindsided, even though she was one of the strongest girls on the tribe. And my, definitely I was stronger than half the dudes on my dumb tribe. And they still voted me off. So it was that embarrassment and that like, um, it was very humbling because I never experienced that before. And now I knew exactly how Nadia felt. Um, and having her there, regardless of her vote out situation was like, you know, just a, an amazing rush of energy for me, but seeing out there and her telling me that I shouldn't be embarrassed and I still have this in the bag if I wanted it was, you know, amazing. Now going into the season, a lot of people had really negative attitudes about the edge of extinction. And yet once you're out there, you know, it, every, everybody who said something bad, everybody who said something bad about it stuck around and played because they believed that it was their chance to get back in it. So it, like as much as they disagreed with it as a, as a twist, they were still like willing to give it their all. Um, did yeah. you notice people's attitudes about Edge of Extinction change while they were out there? I mean, listen, all the players that were out there minus Sandra, like all of us stuck it in. Some people you could tell, like Tyson said it, like I want to say like two episodes ago, where some of us were there and we still were motivated and we still had a purpose while others were just kind of like I, I used to call people beach zombies, like white walkers, except beach walkers, because they would walk around the beach literally like zombies. Like that, this was like Adam and she, you know, like yeah. mindlessly moving around like half dead. So there was like different type of people, and like Tyson was like um somebody like me. So we were like the ones that was still had some oomph in the game. But I think that people like Rob, I think he was anti edge. Uh, 
they change because they realize like at this point you either embrace the edge and you give it your all because you have a shot of getting back in. Um, and the others just didn't come around. I know Adam came to the beach and he never changed his perspective on the beach, but he's also not good on challenges. So if I was Adam, I would probably hate the edge too. <laughs> you think $2 million will million give you quite an attitude adjustment once you're out there. That, that's the motivation. Um, yeah, sure. At, at final six, um, there was the tie vote. You had the chance to send Sarah and Denise to make fire. Um, why was the decision made to, to get rid of Denise? I was like watching I'm like, maybe if, if Denise manages to win, that might be uh, an opportunity to get her to flip. Yeah, so me and Michelle, and I just texted Michelle earlier in the episode, and we were like, dude, we should have just voted off Sarah. Uh, but Denise was so loyal to Ben that it seemed impossible for us to flip her. And maybe Sarah was just doing a better job at duping us, but Denise was like literally stuck to the hip with Ben. Like it was a little bit awkward, to be honest. And um, Michelle, I mean, and uh, Sarah just was seemed a little bit more moldable. So we we could have just let them go to fire, but then we thought we, if we gave Sarah, because I don't know if they showed it, but like not really. Like we went up to and Sarah, and we're like, Sarah, if we pick you and we save you, are you gonna be with us? Like if we need you, like we need want to get rid of like you know. And she's like, I'm with you, I'm with you, which was obviously. But um, yeah. I wish, like, now I wish like, we voted off Sarah instead and see what we could have done with Denise, but. Now, when you're on the edge of extinction and you find an advantage, people were keeping them a secret. Uh, what's the motivation to do that? Because while you're in competition for these advantages, you're not in competition, like, only one of you is getting back into the game. So what, what was the motivation to not tell somebody that you had found something and were sending it in? Well, at the start, I just didn't want people to know that you could randomly find things because I was the first one to find something without a clue. So I kept that to myself so that nobody knew that they could find things by just gallivanting and snooping around the island. And then at the end, I didn't want people to know I'd found things because I didn't want people to be jealous that I was so rich. And uh, people were so salty because obviously, like, <laughs> some people had zero fire tokens at the end. And I had what, 14? And people were like, oh, it's only because she's been there for so long. It's like, hello, no, Amber was there for only one day less than me and she had zero fire tokens, so don't blame the time because I was there for the same amount of time as her, basically, and she had zero. So, um, yeah, I just didn't want anybody feeling jealous or salty, even though they did anyway. And uh, and I just didn't want to, like, share the, the information I was getting. Also, I didn't want people to know what I was sending over because until the end, I just wanted to kind of keep it to myself so that if I had like stepped on any toes or if I said an advantage to somebody somebody didn't like or disadvantage somebody didn't like, um, I just didn't want to create any waves. Towards the end, it was harder to keep things a secret because obviously I found stuff with Parv and I found stuff in front of other people. So at that time, it was like, whatever. At this point, everybody knew. Uh, we do a word association here to get to know your tribe mates a little bit better. I'll give you someone's name. Give me the first word that pops into your head. There are no wrong answers here. <laughs> And uh, you don't have to be nice either. Uh, we'll start off with uh, Ben. Oh. <laughs> That's my response. Oh. Okay. That's fair enough. Uh, Denise. Uh, didn't really get to know her. Okay. Uh, Michelle. Love. Jeremy. Also love. Okay. Rob. <laughs> Not as good as he thinks. Okay. Uh, Parvati. Uh, boss babe. Okay. Uh, Adam. <laughs> Needs, uh, has bad posture. Oh, okay. Uh, Sophie. Wish I played with her. Okay. Uh, Kim. Mama bear. Uh, Ethan. The most amazing human ever. Agreed. Uh, Amber. Should have voted for me. <laughs> uh, Tyson. Uh, he is like the male version of myself. Okay. Uh, Yule. Uh, I don't know. Ivy League. Okay. Uh, Wendell. Princess. Uh, Danny. So confused. Nick. Uh, bought my advantage. Okay. Uh, Tony. He's a good winner. Okay. We'll finish off with Lucina. Uh, definitely duped me. <laughs> oh, that's not a word association. That's too long, right? Nah, uh, uh, we, we, we play it fast and loose here. I do want to know, why, why, what'd you say about Danny? Was, was it? 
uh, what did I say? Oh, well, she's so clueless. Yeah, well, how so? Um, I don't know, like she told, like, she's just a bizarre, she's just a, bizarre, just a bizarre person. Like she's awesome and she was nice, but the thing she did out on the edge and in the game just didn't make sense at all. So she was just like, a, I guess if I could say she was just like, a, I don't know, like, it's just mystery. Like nobody could never ever get close to her. I feel like she voted for Tony because she was hanging out with Wendell a lot at the end, and they had uh, Wendell, her, and um, who used to spend time, spend a lot of time together. And she was Team Edge like the whole time, and she kept telling me like, "I have a good feeling about you going back in the game." Like she would tell me these things, and then she voted for Tony. It just doesn't make sense. So she's just biz I, I don't know, bizarre. <laughs> So we're running out of time. Uh, I have some homework for you. Uh, okay. Because you're coming back. You're coming back. Yes. And I, if if I a... won this season, I would have retired. But now, listen, like, at this point, I'm going to go back. That's fine. There is a hole in your game. I am sending you puzzles. Because oh, my God. If you were good at puzzles, no one would ever beat you in any challenge ever. Ever. All right. Well, How do I get good at puzzles, though? I'm going to send you some puzzles. We're going to figure it out. Yeah, they always that's... use the same puzzles. You just do puzzles and you get better at puzzles. Yeah, especially they, they keep recycling all the same ones. Yeah, uh, Michelle, that one was one she'd already done before. We'll figure that's out. That's what Michelle and I said. I said. I said if me and her could combine to be a survivor player, we'd be the best survivor player ever. There we go. There's some kind of blood versus water angle we can work with you too.